Welcome to the third tutorial of the Twin Safe Department. Today we have a very exciting topic. I will show you how you can create a safe motion project with a safe limited position functionality. My name is still Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. As usual, we start with some basic information, with some information concerning our demo system. Then we have the actual live demonstration within Twinket 3. And afterwards, I will give you a short outlook uh, to the future topics of our tutorials. And we conclude the session with a Q&A concerning today's topic. The detailed goal of our tutorial today is the realization of a safe motion project with safe limited position functionality. I will show you first how you can create the functionality and in the second step, uh, which is way more important, I think, is the commissioning of the SLP. So how you can configure your safe limited position functionality. As prerequisites, uh, the same as last time, we need a Twinkle 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11 a TE9000 version greater or equal to 1211. We need a TwinSafe firmware on the AX8000 greater or equal to 03. And finally, an AX8000 firmware greater or equal to 0104 with the default module ID active. The start of the tutorial is the same as last time. We have a complete TwinCare 3 solution with a standard PLC and an EL6910 safety project, which our AX8000 should finally talk to. Our demo system consists of an CX for the EtherCAT and a standard PLC functionality. We have an EL6910 as the master TwinSafe logic. We have an EL1918 to that input terminal, a light barrier is connected. And last but not least, we have an AX8000 in the X2XX safe motion version. The required safety functionality is we have an EL6910 project talking to the AX8000 via FSOE. And we want to trigger the safe limited position functionality via FSOE. And if the position is not valid anymore, we want to trigger STO on the AX8000. So it's already time for our live demonstration. We have our TwinCat 3 solution with the IO configuration. We have our AX8000 and the X2XX version. We also have our EL6910 and EL1918 and the ER6910 is executing our safe motion control project. For the SLP, we start our twin safe motion wizard. We choose our AX8000. We configure the feedback. In our case, it's a multi-turn feedback. And as safety functions for today's tutorial, we choose the SLP1 functionality for channel A. That's all we need today. The next step, we give the safety project for the AX8000 the proper name and check if the correct functions are selected. We see the SLP for channel A. So in the next step, we configure the connection to the EL6910 so that the motion wizard can generate the alias device connection. Last but not least, we check the safe addresses and let the motion wizard do its work. After the wizard has executed, we have a new safety project. And within that safety project, we have a twin safe group SLP. And within the SLP, we have the SLP function block connected to an OR function block and an AND function block for the state and error handling. And within that SLP function block, we have a new feature, our scaled view, to make the information readable for users. The unit is millimeters per default. And via the properties, we see that we can configure the scaling factor denominator and nominator to make the information readable. 
And to do that configuration, we need some information from the drive manager. So in the next step, we open the drive manager for channel A. And within the drive manager, we choose the tab scaling. There we can see that the drive uh, channel A is configured for 60 millimeters per motor rotation. And within the table beneath, we see the values for the scale factor nominator and denominator. So in the next step, we take over those values to our SLP function block. So via the properties again, we input our values for denominator and nominator. So now the information is also already readable for the user, but now we also want to configure an offset for the safety functionality. So first we configure our safe position values for the upper and lower limit. We take 32 rotations positive and negative. And for the actual offset of the positioning, we need to go to the alias device configuration of the target system. And within the internal safety parameters, we have the parameters for the primary and secondary feedback. And in more detail, we have the primary feedback referencing settings. We have an operation mode. We have a reference safe position for the multi-turn and the corresponding maximum and minimum values. In today's tutorial, we are regarding the multi-turn position. So we need some information from the NC for the reference safe position. The drive is currently standing at 420 millimeters. So to have that as zero value within our safety project, we need to configure the reference safe position multi-turn. The drive is configured for 60 millimeters per second. So we have to input 420 divided by 60. So it's seven or to give it the offset minus seven. Last but not least, we uh, input the maximum and minimum multi-turn uh, configuration. In our case, we choose it to be 1000 and minus 1000. And of course, we have to enable the referencing to manual referencing. And basically, that was all we have to do within our AX1000. So we have the SLP functionality configured uh, with 420 millimeters as a zero point from the safety point of view. So now we can download our safety project, the AX1000 project. We have to input our username and password. Choose our safety project to start the download. And after the download, we check the CRCs and enable the safety project by re entering the password. After the download, we can already go back to our SLP functionality and can, we can have a look at the online view to see if the configuration was right. So we see the input values zero and the scaled actual position is also zero.
With the AX8000 uh, configured, we still need to configure the EL1610 project. Our safe motion wizard generated the alias device for the connection to the AX8000. So within our prepared diagram, we have some variables not connected. We have to connect the arrow X signal for channel A. the SS1 signal for channel A, and the same two signals for channel B, SS1 and the arrow X signal. For today's tutorial, we need the SLP signal to channel A, and of course the two STO signals are missing. So for channel A, we also select the signal and check if the Existing connection is still there, same for channel B. And once again, that was the configuration on the EL16 and 10. So it's quite easy. We have to do a download of our EL16 and 10 project. Of course, re entering the username and password. We check the CRC and enable our safety project. The download changed the ER16910 project with a new alias device, so we changed the process image. So we have to activate the configuration once again. After the project is up and running once again, we can go to our SLP diagram and start by activating the online view. To see if all the signals are coming to the AX8000. We check with the EL16910 if all the connections are running. So we take a look at the process image. We see once again that the commands in the FSOE telegrams are hex 36, which means the connections are running and error act. So everything is fine from that point of view. We check also if the AX8000 error handling, all signals are green for go, the SS1 and the STO signal. And now we want to let the drive do its work. So we go to the drive manager for channel A and we want to run the motor. So we go to the corresponding tab because it's a demo system, we are pretty sure that we can run the motor. So we enable the controller. We reset the existing arrow on the NC axis. And we want to do a reverse sequence from the position minus 420 to positive 420 millimeters. And with a target velocity of 60 millimeters per second. If you remember, we configured the safety application to be zeroed at 120 millimeters. So to check the NC configuration, we activate the scope within the drive manager. We see that the position goes down to 420. 
then it's reversing to positive 420. And we scale the safety position to be zero at 420 millimeters. So when we look at the safety application, we are expecting to see a movement from zero to minus 840. So we take a look at the online values. The multi-turn position uh, is readable within the input online value. And within the scaled actual position of the function block, we see that the position goes up to zero and then it's reversed and is, it is going down to minus 840. So everything works as expected. We have a, a scaled information, wonderful readable for the user and we have the desired functionality within the safety application. Last but not least, there is only one thing to do. We checked all our values. We just have to stop our motor again and continue with the remaining commissioning. That was all from today's live demonstration. I hope I could give you a brief overview on the instantiation and configuration of a safe limited position functionality with our TwinSafe Motion Wizard. As an outlook to the future tutorials, we changed the order of the tutorials. The next uh, tutorial will be as planned, the update of the TwinSafe firmware on the AX8000X1XX-X2XX with the TwinCat 3 safety editor. But then we will do a um, new tutorial on SS1 with envelope monitoring. And then we want to go back to the original order and do a tutorial on creating the safe motion wizard project with additional local safety functionality and one separate tutorial on the backup and restore mechanism and that was all for today i thank you for your attention thank you for listening and i hope i can see you again in the next tutorial